The Lord is looking for an adamant army. An army made up of his sons and daughters who are soldiers of Christ. Those who, as Paul wrote to Timothy, about enduring hardness as a soldier for the Lord. Jesus, Prince of Peace, he spoke about he didn't come on this earth to bring peace. But Lord, aren't you the Prince of Peace? And he spoke about he came to bring a sword. He came to bring division. He spoke about those who live by the sword shall die by the sword. But he told his disciples that about a time coming, that if they do not have a sword, to buy one. A lot of times we look at the angel Gabriel as a messenger and Michael as a warrior. Whether it's true or not, we're all in a fight, a spiritual battle. And the Lord is looking for adamant soldiers. And two things came to mind as I started recording this message. One, when David went to go visit his brothers who were serving King Saul's army, Goliath had been taunting them for 40 days, challenging one of them to come and fight him. Winner takes all, which was ultimately a battle between Goliath's God, Dagon, and David's God, Yahweh. When David showed up, he was like, who's this uncircumcised Philistine who's defining the army of the true living God? Others had been shying away from Goliath, but David ran towards a giant. And not recklessly, he had a plan. And he had, most important, or most importantly, he had his Lord with him. So David, he ran towards the challenge. When the Lord called Gideon to, Gideon to serve him, Gideon had some things he had to overcome. But eventually, he gathered the men. And a part of the conditions for trimming them were those who were afraid were sent back. So the Lord is looking for an adamant army. And a part of this, you may have been through spiritual warfare and said the enemy leaves, but then comes back. See, the devil, he has an adamant army. That's part of the reason why the devil will not quit until he dies. And I speak about the devil dying because the lake of fire and brimstone is the second death. So he will not quit because in Revelation 19, his beast, the Antichrist, and the false prophet, they are tossed alive into the lake of fire and brimstone. He is locked up in prison for a thousand years. And when he comes out, he is adamant about waging war against God. And he raises up an army to come against the Lord. The enemy is adamant. In Luke 4, the devil tried tempting Jesus. And towards the end, in verse 13 it reads, And when the devil had ended all the temptation, he departed from him. But then it says, for a season, the devil came back. That's part of the reason why in Matthew 16, when Peter rebuked Jesus, Jesus then turned to him and said, Get thee behind me, Satan. Thou art an offense unto me. At what we call the Last Supper, Satan entered Judas. He was at Last Supper. He was there, kept on attacking the Lord. The enemy is adamant. He has an army that's adamant. And a part of his army involves people who are also adamant. They will fight you to the death. And this is not like doing a hand-to-hand -hand combat, but this is about being adamant for the Lord. One who 
will endure to the end. It doesn't matter what the enemy throws at you. Even if you're in prison, like Joseph, you're still going to glorify the Lord. Even if you're in Babylon, like Daniel, and it comes down about if you worship any other god, except for Darius, you're going to be thrown to the lion's den. You're still getting your hands and knees and praise the Lord. Those are examples of being adamant, not giving up. Also, when the Lord called Ezekiel, in Ezekiel 3, some verse 4, And he said to me, or said unto me, Son of man, go, get thee unto the house of Israel, and speak with my words unto them. For thou art not sent to a people of a strange speech, and of an hard language, but to the house of Israel. Not to many people of a strange speech, or of an hard language, whose words thou canst not understand. Surely, had I sent thee to them, they would have hearkened unto thee. But the house of Israel will not hearken unto thee, for they will not hearken unto me. For all the house of Israel are impudent, or impudent and hard-hearted. When someone won't listen to God, do you expect a person to listen to you? Also, one of the most challenging things for a person in prophetic ministry is not like Ezekiel did a thing in Ezekiel 8, prophesying about someone dying and a person died. It's not like Jeremiah in Jeremiah 28, prophesying about Hananiah dying and he died. One of the most difficult things in prophetic ministry is when the Lord sends you to a person or a group to warn, but they will not listen. That is arguably one of the most challenging things. And especially if you're there to witness the destruction that comes and you know they were warned. At least in this case, because in um, Jeremiah 20, he spoke about how the people were mocking him. He was in derision every day. He was prophesying and people weren't listening to him. Here, when the Lord is calling Ezekiel, he was letting him know, I'm going to send you, but the people won't listen. That is an indictment against them. Prophets are instrument of judgment. By not listening, people, the judgment the Lord has in store, they will get. With the story of Jonah, Jonah is an instrument of judgment. At least the people listened, repented, so the Lord relented. But then the Ninevites eventually went back into the old sins, and as they were in Nahum, Nineveh was destroyed. And the Lord continued, Behold, I have made thy face strong against their faces, and thy forehead strong against their foreheads. As an adamant, harder than flint, have I made thy forehead. Fear them not, neither be dismayed at their looks, though they be a rebellious house. So a couple of things, as an adamant, harder than flint, have I made thy forehead. Sometimes we may think, how the Lord's going to do that? Maybe he just touches your forehead. Oh, there you are. It's adamant. It's possible. But also part of this adamant is being stubborn, where you will not quit. The same way the devil will not quit. By the way, the devil also has an, a love-hate love-hate relationship with those who are adamant regarding serving the Lord. Because he, the same way he asked or wanted Jesus to serve him, the devil wants those who are adamant for the Lord to be adamant for him. And if you're adamant against him, that's why some people, you're going through attacks and it seems as if they never end. It seems as if the enemy never leaves. And if he leaves only for a short time, he keeps trying to wear you down. And it's a war for attrition. In a recent message I recorded about being a thorn in the thorn's flesh. He keeps on attacking you. You keep on submitting to God and resisting him. And even though the attacks keep on coming, you keep on standing in the gap with and for the Lord. You're adamant. The enemy hates that you're adamant against him. But yes, he would love for you to be adamant 
for him. So it's a love-hate relationship as much as the devil is capable of loving. So again, being adamant, harder than flint. Could the Lord touch a person's forehead? Kind of like how the angel put a hot coal on Isaiah's lips to purify his mouth? Sure. But it's also written, iron sharpens iron. And sometimes, how the Lord makes a person adamant is because the enemy refuses to give up. Now for some people, this is also part of being an adamant army. For some people, it's like they develop a form of battle fatigue or an aversion to fighting. That they get to a point and like, well, I may as well just give up and this will make my life easier. And then others are like, you know what? I gave up before and my life didn't get any easier and I'm not doing it again. Others may be like, nah, I see you devil. I know what you're doing and I'm not going to fall for that trap, not for even a second. I'm going to keep on fighting you no matter which direction you come from, no matter how often you come. This is a fight to the death and you are going to die. That is a part of being adamant. Because even in the natural world, there are people who are adamant. And whether they're using the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, every other word and every sentence that they um, speak or communicate, they can still be adamant for the Lord. Some people, when faced with the warfare, they kind of get to the point where they're tired. And they start saying, well, if I want to kind of back off a little bit, then things will calm down. But when you realize that the devil is a thief and he comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy, he will love for you to lay your weapons down so he can take you out. <laughs> My phone, pardon me. And the same way I wouldn't be distracted by the phone, is the same way you can be distracted by the enemy. And not that I was an enemy. But I was also reminded of Elisha had prophesied to a Shunammite woman that she was going to be her child, his son. She had the son, and the son ended up dying. The woman rushed to Elisha with the hopes that he could raise him from the dead. And when he found out, he sent his servant Gehazi with his staff. And he told him, don't even speak to anyone. A part of being adamant is not falling for the enemy's distractions. And just keep on doing the work of the Lord. So, making a person's forehead harder than flint. It could be some supernatural actions by the Lord. Kind of like in Isaiah 6, the angel put a hot coal on his lips. But adamance will also come from spiritual warfare. Realizing what the enemy has done to you in times past or others. It's like, uh uh, I'm not falling for this or falling for this anymore. So being adamant and says, fear them not. Job spoke about a spirit showing up and basically how the, the hair in his body stands on end. Some people have had experiences like that. A spirit of fear. But even though they feel that way, it's like deep inside they don't fear the spirit. It's more like getting cold and you have goosebumps and hair standing in your, your, um, your body, but inside you're still warm. So there are times when people have had such events where a spirit showed up and they had the reactions of fear but at the same time, they were not running. A part of being adamant or part of an adamant army is having courage on the fire. Again, people ran away from Goliath. David did not. He ran towards the trouble. Neither be dismayed at their looks, though they be a rebellious house. There is no house more rebellious than the devil's. So have you been going through spiritual warfare. It seems if it doesn't end, it doesn't let up. Have you seen others saying, well, maybe if we do this, then the warfare against us won't be as bad. I tell you, be careful with that kind of thought, because if you think it won't be bad, 
sometimes may be worse. And with such warfare, the Lord raises up an army of his sons and daughters who are adamant. And a part of this adamance is exemplified in Revelation 3. And I'll start verse 7. And to the angel of the church, in Philadelphia write, These things saith he that is holy, he that is true, he that hath the key of David, he that openeth, and no man shutteth, and shutteth, and no man openeth. I pause for a second. A part of this adamant is when the devil is resisting you, knowing that ultimately your deliverance, your help, comes from the Lord. Any door the devil is going to open for you, in a sense, either the wrong door or the right door at the wrong time, and it's only going to lead to trouble. Because as scripture tells us, an inheritance claimed too soon or hastily gotten will not be blessed in the end. So realizing that the enemy cannot stop what God has for you. And as a result, you will not submit to him. You're not going to try to go through him to get to God. You don't go through the devil to get to God. Jesus is the way. The Holy Spirit points you to Jesus. Jesus to God the Father. So realizing the Lord Jesus Christ has the keys of David. He opens the door that no man can shut. And just in case the devil wants to get technical with you, we're saying, oh, but that says no man. In Isaiah 14, it refers to the devil as a man. It speaks about Lucifer, the son of a morning star who was cast down. And then the kings were like, or the people were saying, is this the man who made the whole earth? Is this the man? So don't be fooled, no man also means the devil. When you realize that the Lord is your source, it is in him you live, you move, and you have your being. He is the source of eternal life. When you realize that, it will help you to be more adamant. You don't need the devil to open a door for you. Any door he opens for you is a trap door, one to take you down. It also brings up this. A part of um, this adamance, you may have dreams, and in a dream, it's like you get released from a prison. And in times past, maybe in dreams you were running, and it's like you're running with cinder blocks around your legs. You could barely move. Or you felt a chain around your waist. You could barely move. The enemy was holding you back. But then you have a dream about freedom. And it's like, ah, oh, I can breathe. And then next thing you know, you have a dream where the enemy is trying to put you back in bondage. And Isaiah speaks about the lawful captive being, being delivered. The Lord speaking about he will contend with those who contend with you. Jesus spoke about the truth setting us free. And whom the Son makes free is free indeed. Oh gosh. <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't worn this orange shirt in a while. But as I'm speaking that a while ago, I looked and I saw the shirt in a monitor and then it hit me. A lot of times with prisoners, they have them in orange jumpsuits. So you may even have a dream where you're wearing an orange jumpsuit because the enemy is trying to make you his prisoner. But whom the Son makes free is free indeed. See, when you know these truths, you are free. The enemy can't hold you. Also, when it comes to actual war, there are some people the enemy knows that these individuals are going to be trouble to hold on to. When a person special forces, the enemy can expect this person is going to put up a fight. This person is more likely to lead a rebellion to get people out of here. You have to be the individual that you will not be bound by the enemy. Even if you're wearing orange suit, orange jumpsuit, you are still not a prisoner. Daniel wore the clothing of the Persian and Median Empire in Daniel 6. And he still continued continue to worship the Lord. Joseph, even dressing like an Egyptian as the governor, he was still doing the work of the Lord. So no matter what the enemy tries to do to make it seem as if he has you in bondage, 
as many of the apostles wrote, you are not in bondage to the devil. You are a bond servant of Christ Jesus. You have voluntarily given your life to him and they're going to serve him no matter what. So again, the Lord has the keys of David. He opens doors no one can shut and he shuts doors no one can open. I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door and no man can shut it. I pause for a second. If my memory serves me right, in Zechariah 3, there's an incident with um, Joshua, the son of Josedek, how Satan stood at his right hand to resist him. He was disheveled, and all the Lord said, The Lord rebuke thee, Satan. You read the rest of the chapter, you don't see anything more about Satan. He was gone, just like that. A couple of words. The Lord rebuke thee, Satan. And Joshua was given new clothing. So no matter what it looks like, you know. And even the United States military, there's what is called a code of conduct. One of the first articles, I am an American fighting forces which guard my country and a way of life. I'm prepared to give my life in their defense. And meaning those words. Same things being adamant about being a soldier for Lord Jesus Christ. And you will give your life for him. Adamant. Because even if the enemy can take your life, he cannot erase your name from the Lamb's Book of Life. He cannot steal your salvation. In fact, even in death, we have life, everlasting life. So again, I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it. For thou hast a little strength, and hast kept my word, and hast not denied my name. That's a part of adamance. Not denying the Lord's name. Not capitulating to the enemy under any circumstances. In fact, it is written that if the princes of the world, this world had known, they would never crucify the Lord of glory. They would never crucify the Lord Jesus Christ. They thought by crucifying him, it was the end of the Lord. But in a sense, it was the beginning. Likewise, when the enemy comes after you, be a thorn in his flesh. And whether you can do it now or you have to wait until fulfillment of Revelation 19 through 20, you know that he is damned and you're going to witness it. And in Jeremiah 20, he spoke about how people had been mocking him. But one of the things he spoke about their judgment, that he wanted to see it. In Psalm 91, it speaks about seeing the destruction of the wicked with your own eyes. So even letting the enemy know, one day I will see you face to face. I will see you, you will see me. I will see you as you're going to lake a fire and brimstone. I don't play. So again, the Lord is looking for an adamant army. In a lot of militaries with their special forces, there's a selection process. And even a lot of regular military schools, there is a process. You have to meet certain qualifications where you can go. When you get there, there are certain things you have to do to show that you can complete the course. Special Forces, there is a Special Forces selection process before you can actually get into the course. Spiritual Warfare is a part of the process. Will you quit on the Lord? Or will you stand your ground? When the enemy will not quit, are you going to say, I'll not quit either? In fact, may the Lord give me the honor on Judgment Day to grab you by the neck, you devil, and push you into lake of fire and brimstone myself. And on that day, you will know how serious I have been, how committed I have been to the Lord Jesus Christ, my life. The Lord is looking for an adamant army and a part of the selection process, spiritual warfare, long spiritual warfare, warfare that caused others to quit. And you may have felt like walking away. And a part of you knowing that you become adamant is when you tell the Lord something in effect. It doesn't matter if you go to heaven or hell, 
but for the rest of your days, you're going to serve him and him only. The Lord is looking for an adamant army. <laughs> the Lord is looking for and at you. In Revelation 19, the Lord, Jesus Christ, is coming to wage war against his enemies. The Lord is looking for an adamant army.